Okay, so the first thing we want to do is actually download uh, Visual Web Developer 2010 Express Edition. So file up a browser and you need to go to www.microsoft.com forward slash express forward slash downloads, which will then bring you to this page here. And as you can see, Visual Studio 2010 Express. And we want this link here, Visual Web Developer 2010 Express. Click on free download. Click on launch application. And then it will open up a little installer. As you can see, Visual Web Developer 2010 Express is already installed because it's already installed on my system. Put a tick in the box, click install, and basically just keep clicking next until it's installed and you'll be ready to go. Okay, so when you open up Visual Web Developer 2010, you'll come to this little start page. And as you can see, you've got a, a couple of options here. You can create a new project, create a new website, open a new project, or open a website. Um, also here you've got a getting started, which gives you a bit of information. You've got a latest news tab, which is basically just an RSS feed. And when you start creating projects and websites, you'll have uh, a list of them here in the recent uh, project section. Okay, so what we're going to do first of all is create a new website. We'll create this one here, ASP.NET website, which is basically like a template that they've uh, created for you. Here are the two different uh, programming languages, and um, we'll choose Visual C Sharp. Okay, so the location to save is going to be File System, and if we click on Browse, and if we go to Desktop, right, YouTube project, pop that into there, we'll click OK. So what this will do, this will then create all the files and the folder structure. And as you can hear, see in our Solution Explorer here, we now have the YouTube project, we have different folders and we do have a couple of files already. And what it's done for us straight away is open up the default ASPX page. And at the moment, that's in code view. So as you come down here, you can see design, split, which basically shows you code and design. And then back to source. For the purposes of this, I'll just put it back under to design. And as you can see, there's the, the, the default page already created for us. On the left hand side, you can see we've got a toolbox, and in this toolbox we have different controls that we can add to, add to the page. For instance, we can add an image, add a hyperlink, file upload boxes, drop down lists. If we go down here, we have a lot more. We can go to data, we have just quite a lot of things to choose from, but for the time being, we'll just stick with these ones here. If we want to open up another page, all we need to do, you see here we've got the about, double click that. As you can see, it opens up another tab here, and again, we're on source. So if we go back to design, and it shows you, shows you the about page there, and we can switch between the two quite easily by clicking on the tabs. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to show is how to actually add a new page to the, the website. If you right click on YouTube projects at the top, click on add new item, and then we want to select web form, which is basically just a new page. Down at the bottom, we've got to give the page a name, so if we give it the word contact, we need to put a tick in there, but I can explain why for that later. And we click on add, select that, click on design, and there we go. We've basically got a brand new page called contact, where we can start adding in the information that we need. So what I'll explain now is with the, the website that's been created for us here, it's created as a, a site.master file. So if I double click on that and open this up, and as you can see, there's quite a bit of code in there already. Uh, so if I go to design view, basically what the site.master is, it's a master page where you put all of your code for the way this, the site's going to look, the common elements that are going to be on every single page. Basically, by you adding all these elements into one page, it's a lot easier to edit and the whole site will change in one edit. So let me just show you. So if I click on that, 
if we just copy that bit of code there to add a new item, a new navigation item, call that contact, change the text to contact, save the page, to save the page you can do control and S, that's what I just did then. You'll know if a page is unsaved because I have a little asterisk next to the name. So if I save this page as well, and as you can see straight away, that link has now been added to every page where it says contact. So if I think I don't want the contact link anymore, I want, say, a services link instead, all I have to do is come back into the site.master, click on that, come to the code, change the text to services, Control S to save the page, and now if I go back to the About page, it's now changed to Services. Same as, obviously, same as default, it's changed, and Contact has changed, because they're all relating back to that site.master file. So you might be thinking, how do the Contact About Us and Default page know about the site.master? Well, to, to find that out, if you click on, say, the Contact, and click on Source, at the very top here, as you can see, master page file, site.master, and that's how it can find the, the code that it needs to generate the, the page elements. It's the same on every page. If I go over here, master, master page file, site.master, and again, the same for the default one there. So let's, let's, let's add another page. So right click, add new item, on a web form. And uh, this one will create services. And here's that select master page tick box I was talking about earlier. So we click, put a tick in that, click on add. And then here we go. It's now showing you all of the, the .master page files in the project. And currently we only have one. So we have site.master. So if you double click that, it's now created the new services page. It's now wired it up to the master page file site.master. And if we click on design view, we've now got the services page with all of the content from the site.master page included in that, in that new services link. Okay, so that's just a brief overview of Visual Web Developer 2010 Express Edition. What we'll do in the next video is create a blank website and actually create all these files ourselves, create a master page, link them all together, create some styles and um, actually start it all, all ourselves. Okay, see you in the next video.